drive wherever, whenever, and whatever we want. That's the American way. But there's mounting proof that our love affair with the car threatens our national security and the health of our planet. Common sense would dictate that we demand alternatives and consider new possibilities like cars that run not just on gasoline, but on water. Tonight in Project Energy, David Schechter says we have the technology, we just need the help to use less oil. Now what we need is a plan. Everyone who knows the inventor inside this garage says he's a genius. He's redesigned a jet engine for the Air Force, saved a nuclear reactor from melting down, and now Steve Myers is developing a car engine that could reduce America's dependence on foreign oil and cut global warming. This has a future. We've only started. His home videos show years of effort, but now Steve believes he's got it. What our technology does is reduce the consumption of gasoline. With water. Steve's process modifies tap water into a powerful fuel, which he says can improve fuel efficiency and reduce exhaust. It's environmentally the right choice. It might be a long shot, but something's got to be done. The world consumes an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of oil every 15 seconds. That's nearly 250 times in an hour. And most of it is used for transportation. America represents 4% of the world's population, but we use about a quarter of the world's oil, much of it for driving people and products where they need to go. In this country, transportation accounts for almost 70% of all the oil we use. You win the energy war by addressing transportation. Matt Simmons leads the world's largest energy investment bank based in Houston. It's the single most important issue facing the world over the, over the next 50 years. So what can we do about it? We've got to get deadly serious about fuel efficiency. Randy Udall spoke to Don Shelby. Udall is a leading advocate for renewable energy and efficiency based in Aspen, Colorado. He says we can improve our gas mileage by using the technology we have today. We know how to make vehicles now that get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 miles to the gallon. They don't need to be small. They don't need to be unsafe. In fact, they can probably be more comfortable and have more amenities than the ones we're driving right now. So if it's not an issue of technology, then why don't we do it? In the 70s, President Jimmy Carter didn't have hybrid cars or alternative fuels, but he still drove average fuel efficiency from 12 miles per gallon to 28 and a half miles per gallon. Since I left office, as you know, uh, the restraints have been dropped. So now the average automobile efficiency, it's dropped down about like it was when I became president almost 25 years ago. It's powered by the heavy duty six liter. It's dropped in part because of the SUV, a vehicle America fell in love with when gas was cheaper. But heavier vehicles like SUVs are exempt from tougher fuel efficiency standards, and there are millions of them on the road. There's a middle ground. Dr. Ken Keller is a former president of the University of Minnesota, where he now teaches energy policy. He says it is about fuel efficiency but people also need to use less gas by combining errands, sharing rides, or using mass transit. I don't think that we can live with total license, that we can do anything we want and continue to do more of it. Uh, but I don't think that what we're talking about is a future in which we totally change our lifestyle. This is not Jimmy Carter's, we're all going to suffer. Traditionally, green issues belong to Democrats, but not anymore. Republican Senator Norm Coleman supports tighter fuel efficiency standards and using alternative fuels like ethanol made from corn. This is a national security threat. Dependence on foreign oil threatens to undermine the security of the United States of America today and certainly in the future. Energy policy to be effective has to be enduring. It has to be bipartisan. You have to have Democrats and Republicans side by side uh, promoting these policies. One interesting policy plan was introduced this session at the state capitol. It encourages Ford to convert its troubled St. Paul plant to build hybrid cars that run on ethanol from corn and can be charged up with electricity when you get home. Fuel efficiency could be well over 100 miles per gallon, all with available technology. Ford is not yet convinced. 
it's inevitable that we will someday have a motor fleet that gets 40 miles to the gallon. And if it's inevitable, we ought to be doing it sooner rather than later. Steve Myers says eventually his gas-saving invention could be retrofitted onto almost any kind of vehicle. We have the science, we have the knowledge. All we need to do is put it together and use it. And if we already have what we need to get started now, he says, just imagine what's next. Automobiles and trucks are, of course, the biggest gas guzzlers, but I think this clip from the Science Museum of Minnesota will help open your eyes as to how air travel contributes to this problem as well. It shows one day of air travel in the United States. Each line represents a single flight, and as the screen fills up, you start to get the idea. Just as we drive more than the rest of the world, Don, we also fly more. That looks like a lot of fuel. A lot of fuel. 19.5 billion gallons of fuel. Every year. Every year. Thanks, David. Million.